everybody, welcome back. Jeff from Trilex Performance DIY. Um, got another video for you guys. Today we'll be talking about drum brakes on our 1964 Impala Lowrider project. So I will be going through the process of replacing the drum brakes, talking to you guys about what goes into drum brakes, how the drum brakes operate, and talking about a couple little tips and tricks that I've picked up over the years on making a drum brake system job easier to perform. So a couple things to understand when you're talking about drum brakes is First off, you need to understand, not every manufacturer does things the same way. Uh, this is a pretty typical setup for an older GM car. They use this up through, uh, up through the 80s, 90s, um, even on up past that. Other manufacturers also use a similar setup, but something to understand is that they all work on the same basic principle. This piece in the middle here is the hydraulic unit. This is called the wheel cylinder. So when you step on the pedal, brake fluid comes in through the line in the back, pushes out right here up against the shoes and then the shoes push against the drum in order to stop your vehicle. The springs work as a return system so once they go out they need to come back in. The springs are pushed out then they come back in and reset these so your wheel can spin again. You have a piece down here which is called the star adjuster when it comes out to a certain point as these start to wear down this locks out into place and when it comes back in they pivot back in in order to release the shoes from the drums. Something else that's important to understand when you are working with drum brakes is that do only one side at a time. The reason for that is once you have all of these different springs out, you can use the other side as a point of reference so you know how it all goes back together. It just makes it way easier. And that's something I always tell people when teach people about when I'm doing a drum brake lesson like this. Do one side at a time. So the first thing you would need to start doing is start disassembling the springs. Once I start taking springs apart, I will lay them on, on a bench, on a table, somewhere nearby in the orientation that I took them apart. And that also helps to kind of remember how things go back together. So right now I'm going to go ahead and start taking all these springs apart. I'm going to get things cleaned up and then we'll start the reassembly process. <laughs> All right, so now at this point I can go through, I'm gonna clean everything up. Um, I did buy a hardware kit which comes with the springs and I bought a new adjuster and a new set of shoes. Everything else is gonna get replaced. Some of these pieces I'm gonna go ahead and sandblast, paint up, and I'm gonna do that right now. So we will come back and then reassemble. All right, so now it's time to reassemble our shoes to our backing plate. All right, before we get started on that, it's important that you apply some sort of um, some sort of brake lube onto the backing plate on these raised points right here, one, two, three, one, two, three. What this is gonna do is when the shoes come across and move back and forth on here, this is gonna eliminate the squeal possibility um, coming from the drum brakes. <laughs> Alright, so now I'm going to go ahead and get the shoes back on. So when you, when I took this apart, you may have noticed that on the front side facing the front of the car, you would have seen this shoe right here. So this had less surface area than the one that was on the back. Um, typically with a drum brake setup, you would want the greater surface area in the front facing the forward, forward part of the car and the less in the, in the back facing the rear of the car. The front would be called the primary shoe, the back would be called the secondary shoe. So you want to have more of that surface area on the front as you're slowing down to apply more pressure to that front and able to stop you a lot better. Um, my guess is that whoever did the brakes the last time around just had them swapped, so I'm going to go ahead and put them in the correct location. <laughs>
right, so once you have all your springs in place, if you've got everything situated the way you need it, you're going to adjust your star adjuster down here. What this does is it separates out the bottom of the shoe to keep tension on it. Um, when you step on the brake pedal, this is what's going to adjust it as this moves back and forth. This arm allows us to turn and set tension on the shoes. So in order to do that, just grab a, a screwdriver, grab a special tool, whatever you got, adjust it that way. Slide your drum on. Now, once you slide your drum on, what you're looking for is to give it a turn and you want it to rotate about one and a half turns and stop on its own. All right, so you want to have a slight drag on it. If you have difficulty getting the drum on, as the drum won't come on, that means that your star, your star adjuster is dialed out too far, so you'll need to bring it back in a little bit. So this slides on pretty easily like this. It's got pretty good tension. It's got a little bit of a drag when I spin it. I'm pretty happy with that. I might tighten it up a little bit more, but this should be good to go at this point. All right, everybody, thanks for joining us. We uh, greatly appreciate We gr appreciate the support. If you have not yet, make sure you subscribe to our channel. We've got lots of cool projects coming your way. Um, DJ up north at Tri Lakes Performance DIY North has got a lot of cool stuff going on with his new port. Um, doing some cool stuff with his Land Rover right now. Hey, he's got a Mustang project coming up. Um, down here at Tri Lakes Performance South, I'll be finishing up our low rider project here. I'll be dropping the engine and transmission in it soon, get that running hopefully next week. I've got a cool project, a little moped I'm building for my daughter, um, putting in a 212cc engine in that, so that thing should even fly. So go ahead and stay tuned. We've got lots of cool stuff. Thanks a lot, guys.